we've got six myths about cruise pricing. At the end of the video, we're going to tell you not only where to buy a cruise, but when to buy it. How about that? Yeah, how about <laughs> that? We are actually taking a little bit of a break. We're on a cruise right now, and we uh, took a stop in Auckland, New Zealand, a beautiful place. And we decided to just take this opportunity to shoot this video while we're out touring around in this beautiful city. Hi, I'm Chris. Hi, I'm Steve. We are a full-time traveling couple who retired and left the U.S. back in May of 2021 when we sold everything, packed our two carry-on suitcases, and hit the road. We also take repositioning cruises pretty regularly. How many have we taken? I think this uh, eight, number eight's coming up. Yeah, we take repositioning cruises to get from continent to continent. And so we feel like we've got some good data about repositioning cruises. So we just need to throw up some caveats, first of all. We're not travel agents, we're not analysts, we're just people who regularly take cruises. And in particular, we regularly take repositioning cruises. Now repositioning cruises, if you don't know what those are, take a look at our video here. Those are one-way cruises that many ships in the cruise industry uh, use. What they do is they move their ships from one market to another market seasonally. So. For example, all the Mediterranean ships moved to the Caribbean, all the, the Alaska ships moved to uh, the Mexican market, and so on. We try to catch those repositioning cruises to go from continent to continent and regularly take them, right? Yeah, and it's great. It's a great opportunity and a great way to get around in style, I like to say, and not have to worry about things like jet lag and stuff to to go, you know, on those like 12 hour flights. Yeah, ugh, ugh. especially from Sydney to, to, to LA. That, right. was a, that was a good cruise. Anyway, so what we, we're talking about today is repositioning cruises. And we collected data over a year to try to determine when the best cruise price occurred and which website to purchase it from. Now, the, this is, so this is our case study of our situation where we were looking at a repositioning cruise in April from Sydney to the west coast of the U.S. We didn't care how we got there or which city we went into. We were just trying to get from Sydney back to the U.S. Right? right. Yeah. That's right. And there are a lot of places. I mean, this is confusing. It was confusing for us, so we decided to do this little study. Uh, so many different places that you can buy a cruise. And there's so many different price changes that we didn't realize. And packages and all yeah, kinds of stuff. Yeah, so we wanted to know, and, and, and again, the myths. So for us, we're going to kind of bust the myths on those uh, travel purchases for these repositioning cruises. Right, and so this whole case study is data-driven. It's not rumors, it's not what we think, it's not, it's actually data-driven. We get we, spread, we create a spreadsheet, we put all this data in there, and now we're here to share it with you. But just to reemphasize, it's repositioning cruises only. It was in April uh, 2024, and it was from Sydney to Los Angeles. So this is, we looked at six different cruises, was it six, seven, seven different cruises, to, which, which had various itineraries right. to get from Sydney, and um, we we weren't ne we weren't necessarily looking for the cheapest cruise. We right. wanted to figure out the cheapest time to purchase one of these cruises. Yeah, none of these cruises had the exact same itinerary or had the exact same pricing. Um, so that really wasn't the the purpose of this study. The purpose of the study was when is the best time? How do the changes of on the pricing? occur over time. And we were looking for an inside cabin at a guaranteed room. So this is the cheapest room you can buy on a cruise. That's what we focus on. And we focus strictly on the cruise price, not the drink price or the web, the Wi-Fi price or whatever. Strictly the bottom line price. Of course, if you're looking for those extras, you know, you'll have to throw those in as you're thinking about your data points. Yeah, and we'll talk we a little for. bit about that as one of our myths also about right. those, all those extra packages. Right. Okay, so myth number one. Myth number one is you want to buy your cruise when that cruise is first introduced, when that cruise first hits the books and is, is announced. And this could be two years in advance. Right. Um, that's the best time and that's the time when you need to buy it. Boy, is this a myth. So we're going to throw up a chart here and you can see in the column, the first column on the left is what the prices were when these six or seven cruises first launched. And you can see the prices range from about $3,500 to about $1,400 per person. 
And that's all in. That's the cruise plus the, the port taxes and, and the sales taxes and all this right. stuff. So that's the all in price just for the cruise. And uh, you can see that, wow, not only is this a huge myth, but it's probably one of the most expensive times to buy the cruise. Yeah, and I, was, I wasn't really surprised about this because I constantly see about how cruises are going on sale and there's flash prices and there's, there's discounts, you know, how, over, over the time that they're advertised. And uh, what do we find? It, it never in any case was the best price the first price. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so myth number one, <laughs> busted. Right. Okay. Yes. Myth number two. Okay. Myth number two is that you should buy on Black Friday. And it just so <laughs> happened that this, in this particular study that we were looking at, that we were purchasing a cruise for April. Mm -hmm. So when it was coming to like October, November, you know, we were thinking, you know, Black oh, Friday. Black Friday is going to hit and it's going to be some awesome deals and some great advertisements and we're just going to get the best price ever. And no. no. So no. if you look at the chart again, wow. Uh, so you see on the chart, we the, 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 the first column, of course, was the starting price. The second column is just a random five months from the cruise. So right. this... So in this particular case on the, on the data, that could have been probably October or so, you yeah. know, just whatever. We just want to grab a data point just to compare that to Black Friday's numbers. I mean, it really was at that point where, you know, I, I like to plan out and I'm looking at the prices and I'm seeing that they're that they've come down from their original prices. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I want to make a decision. And Chris was like, we like, got to no, wait till Black Friday. No, no, no. Friday. It's going to be so incredible. You should have seen us. We're like midnight Black Friday. And we're, we were in Australia at the time, I think. And we're trying to figure out, okay, yeah. so Black Friday, U.S. time is a black, you know, what it's time is Black Friday, <laughs> right? Like, so we're like midnight on since anyway. So for actually, it was like for a 48 hour time period because we were in Sydney, which is what, 18 or 19 hours ahead of the U.S., right. we had like a 48 hour time period to see if the price was would change up or down left or right they went up every yeah. single cruise went up on black friday but but it wasn't only that but there also we were getting like the advertising was like crazy like i was getting two or three emails a day yeah. from the from the cruise lines and from different you know websites about saying and even banner ads across and, and the computer all these different promotions and these specials and Chris and I are like, oh, what is this one? What is this? We're investigating, and we're like, well, this is not a deal. And what, and, and what those those specials were is they often were like reduced deposits. Instead of a thousand dollar deposit, you could do a two hundred dollar deposit. Yeah. Or, or if you bought the whole the big package, you know, the drink package and the internet package and the whole thing, then you got like a five. You know, we were looking at the pricing, we we're like. Well, you, I could have gotten the same deal yesterday or last mm -hmm. week. But this is it, it really looked like a deal, it but looked, it wasn't a deal. It was the same we price as before. It. it was just marketed with a different spin, but it was still the same price. So anyway, the, yeah. the package prices stayed the same, but the price of the cruise went up on Black Friday. So myth number two busted. Myth number three. <laughs> myth number three. Related to myth number two is that it must be Cyber Monday. Or Travel, <laughs> Travel Tuesday. Tuesday. Must be it. Or Cyber so Week. You can see us like this whole weekend. We're like, oh, did you get that email? Wait, wait, check this one. Wait, look at this one. And it bust the same thing. It Prices. was like, what? Yeah, so, so from uh, Cyber Friday all the way through Cyber Week, the price was the same the whole week long. So no changes on the no various changes. days. Lots of activity, yeah. lots of Chris and Steve trying to figure things out, but but it was like we did not make a decision. So then... So leading to myth number four is... Yes. You have to wait till... No, no, no. But myth number four was the email marketing. Oh, it was the email. Right, I mean, right. You need to wait to get the good deal that they're going to send you an email, and that email is going to have this special deal. Because we belong to all of the, you yeah. know, all the cruises... And all the cruise there. lines and all the cruise newsletters yeah. and yeah. everything. Not a single time did a deal generated in an email produce a better price in any situation. Now, what did get better, maybe through the emails, especially if you had a private travel travel agent email or a cruise critic email or something, was that you might get a better onboard credit, maybe. Maybe you you maybe the travel agent offered you a fifty dollar onboard credit or triple A would maybe give you a free um, right. premium dinner, specialty dinner, or you might get a free picture or something like that. But still that bottom line, the price 
did not change from an email deal. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. All right. Myth number five. Uh, and this is also, again, about timing. So for those of you who have taken a lot of cruises, you know that 90 days out from your cruises, when you have to have your full payment made. So within 90 days, the, the full payment has to be made. And maybe this is just something that I thought or other people think is that that's the best that at 91 days away is really when the best price is going to be because or maybe even 89 days like right around that 90 yeah, day right, window right around, the, yeah. right around that 90 days is going to be because that's when they're that's when they have to get all the money in at, at that three months and they have out. to reconfigure what the inventory is and, and right, you know, right. do the immigration list and do the provisioning and all this stuff Exactly. Well, if you can see from the chart, we actually took a screenshot of 91 days out to see how the price was comparing to, to the other prices. And the, the prices were better, definitely, right, right around the 90 day. There was some improvement, but it was not the best time to buy. How about that? So, and you should have seen us. We we're like, nine, and we had all, we were tracking the departure dates on all seven, uh, seven cruises. And on the 91st day, we would look at the price on the 90th day, on the 89th day. And it I, got better, but it wasn't the best price. And I, and I think that a part of that is this, you know, fear of missing out is that, that it's just like, oh, this cruise is going to sell out and we're not going to get a cabin. This is, we're, you know, we're, we're waiting too long. And it's going to be sold out and we won't be able to get on a ship. So we learned an interesting thing from our travel agent when we were at that 90 day research. And what he told us was that unless the ship is completely sold out, like every room is sold, they will always have inside cabins for sale. Now, whether or not they actually have inventory for inside cabins is a different conversation, but the cruise lines will always advertise inside cabins because they're the cheapest cabins and you can always get people on with a cheaper price. And then if they have to um, promote or, or, or elevate somebody that already has an inside cabin to a better cabin, the cruise line will do that because no one's ever going to say, no, I don't want a better cabin, especially when right. I paid for the cheap right. price. So the cruise line will elevate people to a higher cabin level in order to keep selling that lowest cabin price. So you yeah. always you may you may sell out of a balcony cabin or you may sell out of a suite, but you're they're never going to sell out of inside cabins unless they actually really sell out. And now I, I just have to kind of put a disclaimer on this because I have seen sold out cruises. Yeah. I have seen that. Right. So so I, I, we're not going to say that cruises never sell out because they do. I, of course they do. In this particular situation, in this analysis that we did, um, there we didn't. We're yeah. worried about inventory. And remember, we are only talking about repositioning cruises and we're only talking about these seven that we track. So we should yeah. do that. We should do this for another. We'll do this again. We'll do this video again on another round of when next time we're looking for cruises. Yeah, you but do all right, well, maybe we won't. But anyway, oh, no, myth number six wait. is cruise lines yeah, always yeah, have yeah, the yeah. best price, right? Yeah, and we, I get told this a lot is that don't deal, you know, with the travel agent. You can you gotta go directly to the cruise line. That's the only way that you're going to get a good price is that you've got to go to, you know, the, the, the cruise line directly. Now, before we, we before we debunk this myth, let's also say, though, that um, there's a lot of conversation about should you book with the cruise line directly or should you book with a travel agent? There are pros and cons to each. If, you, if we're talking about airlines, we would always say only book with the airline. But when it comes to, because if you have, and the, and the myth, the, the truth being, if you have a trouble with your airline, and you need to rebook or whatever, it's much easier to deal directly with the airline than with the travel agent. But especially if it's like, you know, 1 a.m. and you're in, in Abu Dhabi and, you're, and your travel agent's sleeping, that's tough. But when it comes to cruise lines, uh, there's, there's a lot of pros and cons. Should you book directly with the, print, with, the, with the cruise line? Possibly. Should you book with your travel agent? We've had a much better experience actually working with our travel agent who's actually gone to bat with us a couple of times over price changes and some onboard scenarios that we had. Our, our cruise agent, his name yeah. is Dean Bloom, uh, but at Vacations to Go, we'll put his information down, down below. Um, yeah. And by the way, we're, what we're gonna mention next, we don't get paid by any of these cruise lines, any of the, nobody's paying us to give you this information. This is straight from our data, straight from our data sets. Okay, right. so. Wait, I just want to add something oh. to that because this is actually something that was surprising to me because in this age of internet and this age of being able to click on your computer or on your phone and buy anything, it really is surprising me that that personal 
interaction and that personal relationship with the travel agent really does it, make it really a has, difference. It has paid off. And 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 we've been told, you know, by the cruise lines that agents are protected. And you know what that means is that that they're they're going to be treated really well and the agents are, are highly respected. Right. Um, and also, if you want to, if you feel like you need to book at the cruise line, you can, and then you can transfer your booking to your agent if you want to support your agent. Right. So anyway, okay, we track uh, the, the seven cruise lines, we or cruises, we tracked across six different, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, five, five different websites. We tracked across the cruise lines website, um, Cruise Plum. Now, Cruise Plum is a, a great website. Our friends over at, Go, at To Go Rome did a great tutorial about how to use Cruise Plum, so go watch that. Uh, great place to look at history and room prices and so on. You can't buy there. When you click at Cruise, Cruise Plum to buy, it actually takes you to the web to the cruise website. Uh, Costco, USAA, and Vacations to Go. So we tracked all these cru- all these prices across all those those and if we have this. We have the spreadsheet if you want to see it. We do have to be able Ultimately, to Ultimately, we're going to show us a, a, a screen capture here. This is how the prices vary across the web across the price across the websites. And this was on the day that we purchased. So we actually purchased at about 65 days out from our departure. So that's when we stopped looking at the data, and that's when we stopped. At critiquing because we feel like we had the data we were looking for. Did we know when the when our cruise was going to be priced the lowest? And that's when we determined actually which cruise we were going to take too. So what you see uh, this what we end up taking the Princess Royal. It actually goes from Sydney to Tokyo, and then we take an additional cruise from Tokyo to Seattle in order to get back to the U.S. Um, and Again, this uh, the cruise wasn't the cheapest cruise per night, so the, the cheapest being the price per person per night, but it was the cruise that made sense to us. And, and what we found that that about 65 days out was the best time to purchase that cruise for the right price. And the, the, prices, the cheapest price was at Vacations to Go, and again, this is the all-in price with taxes and so on and so forth. The cheapest price was at Vacations to Go, and then when it, it went up, to the Costco price. Now on this chart, I have to say that the Costco price of 2341, that was for a balcony because Costco was not selling any inside cabins, even though all the other websites were selling inside cabins. That was interesting. Also on the vacations to go, we got about $140 onboard credit. And then the, um, the princess, uh, the princess onboard price, we actually were able to get a, we were on a, the cruise that we're on now, actually, we asked what the price was for this cruise in the future. So we wanted to see what the onboard princess price was. And that was 1864, which compared to the princess website price of 2205. So uh, the onboard price was better than the princess price, but it was not better than vacations to go. So myth number six but the cruise line always has the best price. Not true. In this particular scenario, we found vacations to go was the best price and at about 65 days out. I don't think we could have pushed, pushed this to closer because we had to start planning everything else around it. We just couldn't wait any longer to plan, right, yeah. for our departure dates. Yeah. yeah. So we were getting anxious and I, we probably could have waited it found a better price at 30 days out. Who knows? But yeah, our anxiety we'll, wasn't going to allow me to we'll do an update to, to this <laughs> video, you know, one week out. What's the pricing on all these on these these uh, cruises? But yeah, I, I don't know that I want to do that because if we find out that it's cheaper than what we pay, I I <laughs> after I make a decision, because it's not refundable, so it's not right. like we can but change But once you get past that 90 days, all, anytime you purchase a, price, it's gonna be, a cruise, it's going to be non-refundable. So you can't take advantage of any reduced price after that. So if you... Prior to 90 days, if you only have a deposit down on your cruise, you can take advantage of lower pricing. But you, once that 90 days, that final final full payment day passes, you can't take advantage of any price changes. So anyway, that's it. What have you found cruising? Are we right? Are we wrong? Are we absolutely like completely wrong? You want to see our data set? You want to what? You want us to prove it to you? That's fine. Just take a comment below. If you agree this has happened to you, make a comment below. Or if you've had 
a completely different experience with maybe you know, a typical you know circular cruise, one that starts at a, it starts at city A and comes back to city A. That's fine too. We haven't looked at those. Maybe there's a whole new set data set that can be found there. Anyway, we'll see you around the world. See you next week.